Hey everybody, talking about a fun topic today, spins. I know the title of the video seems like clickbait. Bear with me and give me a chance here. I am not saying that anything that is being taught to flight instructors is incorrect. And I'm, I'm just saying there is a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to stall spin accidents that is being missed in aviation. There is a piece to this puzzle that people aren't getting, people aren't practicing, people aren't learning. It's just not understood. Give me a chance, hear me out. All right, to understand what I'm gonna to try to explain here, I'm gonna to try to make it as simple and swallowable as possible. We're gonna look at a dart first. A dart has a heavy end and then a light end with a flight in the back. And when you drop a dart, if it has far enough to fall, obviously the heavy end comes down and the end that's making lots of drag ends up at the top. The nose, think of this as the nose, rotates down towards gravity. We also know if you drop a dart that it will rotate past center because of inertia and it'll go kind of through this oscillation a little bit as it falls, each one getting less than the one before that, but that's because it has some rotational inertia as the nose comes down. That's a dart, right? If I put some wings on this, let's imagine that our dart is now an airplane, okay? Stalls are being taught to flight instructors and practiced by flight instructors when they do the, or not stalls, I'm sorry, spins are being taught to flight instructors and being practiced when they do their flight instructor training in a wings level configuration, generally in the power on, power off stall scenarios. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because they're going to be teaching those and that's when students are going to tend to get uncoordinated in flight and they're stalling the airplane and to spin the general rule of thumb that people are taught and told and is passed down is if you don't stall you can't spin and if you stay coordinated you can't spin and that is not entirely true but that's a pretty good rule to keep people out of trouble but you got to understand this other factor with the dart so if you stall wings level just like a dart, even if it has wings taped to it, the nose comes down, airspeed builds, you fly away, no big deal, right? If you stall in a bank, in a turn, and this is where stall spin accidents are generally happening. You know, people talk a lot about that turn from base to final when people stall because that's when you're generally flying slow, kind of on purpose, but if you lose situational awareness, you get a little too slow, you may stall in that turn or whatever. But the big key to these accidents is that they're happening in a bank and stalls and spins are not being practiced in a bank. And what's happening, if we think about this dart for a second, in a bank, the still is a nose down tendency. However, now, because you're banked, it creates a yawing moment. And just like a pendulum swings, there's some inertia that happens here and the nose will come down. If airspeed is allowed to build, the tail of the airplane will do what it's supposed to do and the airplane will just fly away. But the first sign of an incipient spin, the first phase of a spin, the thing that you look for, this really wise hang glider pilot once told me, and it's been in the back of my head ever since, honestly. It just lives rent-free in my brain. But the first thing to look for when entering a spin, to know when you're entering a spin, is that the yaw rate is greater than that of a coordinated turn of the same bank angle. Marinate on that for a second. Same bank angle. So a 15 degree bank turn and the airplane's going around, there's a certain yaw rate, a certain heading change that goes along with that. If you are yawing at any faster rate than that, then that is the first sign that you are entering a spin or possibly entering a spin. 
So what's happening in these stall spin accidents? People are making the turn and stalling and the nose comes down. They get scared and pull back, which prevents the airplane from building up speed. Even if they are staying coordinated, that yawing moment that has happening is building inertia and just like a, how a pendulum swings, the nose can come past center and it's starting the rotation for the spin. Now, if you read the Bold Method website, it talks all about the asymmetric aerodynamics and how that auto rotation where the spin kind of perpetuates rotating, why that's happening. But the important part is that this is what gets the airplane rotating in the first place to allow that spin to happen. And it is very natural, even if it's not the right thing, that if you stall and the nose comes down, especially if you're base to final and you're low and you're near the ground and you're suddenly looking at trees, people will instinctually pull back even if they know intellectually it's not the right thing to do. The reflex for a lot of people is to pull back. And if you prevent the airplane from building speed, you prevent the tail from doing its job and keeping the airplane from rotating past center and continuing into a spin. And these stall spin accidents are happening. So what is the solution to all of this? Well, I think we need to be teaching instructors about this yawing moment that is created when you stall in a turn and the nose comes down. When you do your commercial training, you do a maneuver called lazy eights, which are kind of in hang gliding, we call them wing overs and they're just turns back and forth. And on each one, you climb and roll. And as airspeed decreases, the nose is allowed to slide around and you're creating this yaw rate that is definitely greater than the bank angle of a coordinated turn. And because airspeed builds at the end of each one, we don't think anything of it. Nobody ever said anything to me and there's nothing in any of the FAA publications about spin awareness during lazy eights or that lazy eights are a good preparation for avoiding spins because you want the airspeed to build back up. So I think this seems simple, you know, it's a piece of paper on a dart. Hopefully I've laid it out in a way that makes a lot of sense, but Aviation isn't talking about this. And I think people understand it in like a fundamental sense, but the application in that stalling in a turn creates this yaw and that's, that is the big piece of the puzzle to why stall spin accidents are still happening. It's not because people don't understand spins. It's not that people don't understand stalls, but the combination of stalling in a turn and creating this yaw and that's exactly what I do in my hang glider. So to spin a hang glider and I'll tell you how to do it so that people can not do it, but I'm basically doing an aggravated stall where I have extra airspeed and I allow the glider to pitch up and I roll a little bit at the same time. So the glider begins to slow down in a bank in a turn and as it does, the nose wants to come down and around, and that's creating this yawing moment. Now, what I am doing in a hang glider, because we can move our weight forward and back, is as the nose comes down, I get a really good yawing moment. And this is an important part, is I don't move my weight back until I have that yawing moment. Then I push out and move my weight aft. So then there's less nose down force because the CG is moved way back. And that allows that spin to kind of continue and rotate and then I can keep the glider in a somewhat stalled state and I'm still making little inputs and kind of flying it through the spin, which is a whole other video, whole other topic. But a key there is that the further forward center of gravity is, the actual, the more action you get when you stall in a bank and the nose comes around and the more the rotational inertia may bring the airplane past center if the airspeed doesn't build up. So everything that is taught about spins is that aft CG is bad and it can cause an airplane to be more likely to spin, easier to spin, it can cause a spin to be unrecoverable. All true, all great information. But what if the CG is forward? You're thinking you're safe, you're thinking you're great. If I stall, the nose just comes down, I fly away. But if you stall in a turn with the weight forward, like the dart, 
the nose comes down and it creates this rotation, it can go past center. And if you pull back or you at least don't allow the airspeed to build up enough that the tail can overpower that rotation, you can get a quarter revolution, half a revolution, and that might be all it takes if you're base to final and you're not very high. So I wanted to make this video. I wanted to get this thought out there. Let me know if you agree or not. If you do, please share it. Please tell everybody you know. I would love for stall spin accidents to not happen anymore. I would love for not one more family to have to lose somebody to a stall spin accident because they stalled in a bank and the airplane built up this yawing moment and everything went from there and it's just not as understood as it could be and a little bit of understanding goes a really long way so thanks for watching let me know what you think in the comments if you appreciate this give the video a like a share whatever and uh see you on the next one cheers